1998-1999 year. Uh, the first order of business is the swearing-in ceremony for councillors-elect and for school board members-elect. Madam Clerk. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask councillors-elect McGinty and Watson to join me in front of the podium, and that will be followed by school board members-elect Marie Prager and Jennifer DeSena. I would like to extend my, my congratulations to uh, Mr. McGinty and uh, Ms. Mrs. Watson and uh, Marie Prager and Jen DeSena. Uh, it's because individuals are taking the time out of their life to serve their community that, uh, in large part, we live in the wonderful community that we all enjoy. Uh, the roll call by the town clerk. Councilor Barry. Present. Councilor Byer. Present. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Groff. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Reed. Here. And Councilor Watson. Here. We have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen that wishes to discuss a matter which is not on the agenda tonight? <laughs> Seeing none, we will move on to presentations. Um, Mr. McGovern, I'll meet you at the podium. We're going to start tonight with um, some council resolutions that concern uh, some of our high school students. The first is Vincent Olson. Would you come forward, please? Vincent is a member of our fire department, uh, and I think that's uh, a good thing for all of us to know because there are a lot of our young people that are actively engaged uh, in their own service to our town. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council Resolution, whereas Vincent Olson recently participated in a two-person team in the Ford AAA Student Auto, Care, Auto Car Care Challenge for the State of Maine, 
And whereas Vincent and his teammate won first prize in the team competition and assisted the Portland Arts and Technology High School in winning four of the five top prizes at the challenge, thus earning the school a new 1998 Ford Mustang, and whereas the automotive competition requires excellence in academics as well in, as in technological performance and preparation for the event includes two years of study, research, and intensive training, and whereas the achievement of Vincent Olson is deserving of praise and admiration from the entire community of Cape Elizabeth. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate Vincent Olson on his first place finish in the Maine Ford AAA Student Auto Care Challenge, and we wish him well as he represents Maine in the national competition in Washington, D.C. later this month, dated this eighth day of June, uh, in the year 1998 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, signed by all the town councillors. Congratulations, Vincent. And now I'd like another member of our fire department to come up and stand next to me by the podium, Chad O'Malley. This is a Cape Elizabeth Town Council resolution. Whereas the Maine State Health Occupations of America Student Organization recently held its annual leadership conference, and whereas Chad O'Malley and a teammate competed in and won first prize in a team event featuring skills in CPR, first aid, and whereas the competition included both academic achievement as well as emergency component scenario, and Chad has been a student in Cape Elizabeth schools since attending Pond Cove Elementary School, and whereas the leadership skills evidenced by Chad's victory represents achievement that is deserving of praise and admiration from the entire community of Cape Elizabeth now, Therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate Chad O'Malley on his first place finish in the Maine State Health Occupations of America Student Organization, and we wish him well as he represents Maine in the national competition in Orlando, Florida later this month, dated this 8th day of June in the year 1998 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and it's signed by all the town councilors. Congratulations. <laughs> And now if I could have Dick Mullen come up, and if I could have everybody that's here that was involved at all in Guys and Dolls all come up, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> See, that's a guy, that's a doll. That's a come on, we're gonna, we're, Mr. Mullen and I don't bite, so come over this way. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. For those of you that at home, and I don't know how there could be somebody in Cape Elizabeth that didn't know that there was a production of Guys and Doll, there was, what, approximately 1,800 to 2,000 people that I think, I think. came and bought tickets and saw this performance, and I, didn't, I haven't met anybody who didn't have a great time. The town council uh, has passed a resolution. Uh, Cape Elizabeth Town Council Resolution. Whereas the students of Cape Elizabeth performed Frank Lazar's Guys and Dolls for three standing room only shows in early June of 1998, and whereas this musical involved the energetic participation of over 90 students in every aspect of the production, both on stage and behind the scenes, and whereas the story of Nathan Detroit, Nicely Nicely Johnson, Benny South Street, Sky Masterson, Sarah Brown and Miss Adeline won the hearts of the more than 1,000 citizens who saw the musical presented so superbly. And whereas the Cape Elizabeth Town Council appreciates the efforts of Richard Mullen and the entire cast and crew in providing a unique and enthralling performance for our community, now therefore be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council assembled that we hereby congratulate everyone at Cape Elizabeth High School who contributed with time and talent 
to the rousing success of the 1998 performance of Guys and Dolls, and we thank you for the enriching entertainment you have provided to our community. Dated this 8th day of June in the year 1998 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and it's signed by all the town councilors. Congratulations, Mr. Mullen. Thank you. Well, uh, theater certainly is a public art. It's uh, developed in public. Uh, it is seen by the public. It requires a great, great many people uh, to produce it. I am so uh, thankful and uh, pleased at uh, this award. Uh, thanks so much. But I think we should all speak. We should all sing one verse of uh, Guys and Dolls. OK? So here we go. When you see a guy who meets the stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for so long. When you start a job waiting on the rain, chances are it's the same as only a job can be your game. When you meet the gents, paying all kinds of rent, for a fight that you fight in the top's not hard. Call it sad, call it funny, call it sad and even money. That was great. Thank you very much. Uh, let's do. I believe now that we're going, we have plaques for the various chair people who've served this last year in various committees. And I would turn the podium over to our town manager, Mike McGovern. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to wait just a moment. Yes. Members of the council, uh, each year, and members of the audience, each year at this time it's traditional to recognize all of the outgoing chairs of our town boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, it's, I think everyone is aware we have a tremendous number of citizens who serve on our different boards and commissions. At times it numbers as high as 200. And there's always a few individuals who are willing to give the, the really, truly extra time in order to chair those committees and would like to recognize them this evening, the town council would, the town council chairman, uh, as, as well as myself. First, I do want to mention four that are not here this evening. Uh, Ed McComb, who's been a very able leader of the Riverside Cemetery Board of Trustees. Janet McKay, uh, who did an exceptional job chairing the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Uh, Karen Price, who chaired the Family Fund Day Committee for two years. She came to her first meeting, was elected as chairman and uh, really was up to the task. And Susan Brazil, who uh, really enriched Cape Elizabeth with uh, her leadership of the Cape Elizabeth Arts Commission. Uh, the first one we'd like to recognize this evening is Jean Fine, the chairman of the Recycling Committee. Uh, during Jean's tenure, the Recycling Committee was recognized uh, by the state as uh, Cape Elizabeth providing one of the best recycling programs uh, in Maine. And I think when everyone looks at the transfer station and the recycling operation there, it's a real credit to Gene and to the following members of the recycling committee. Jean. <laughs> Almost as pretty as the recycling area at the dump is Fort Williams Park. Uh, the second recipient this evening is the past chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, Paul Thalen. Uh, Paul uh, chaired the Fort Williams Committee during a period when it looked at many special requests. Uh, he also, as a member and as chairman of the committee, was very involved in looking at issues involving the, the placement of certain facilities in the town, uh, ball fields. He handled every issue in a very even-handed way, very respective uh, to public input. And I think as everyone looks at Fort Williams, they can see uh, the benefits of Paul's leadership, uh, those who preceded him, and those will th that will succeed him. Uh, he's done an excellent job uh, as chair of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. The 
These are in no certain order. They're in the order that the plaques are uh, before me. Uh, the next recipient uh, has one of the more difficult jobs in Cape Elizabeth, and I have to be very careful what I say about this gentleman because there's an issue pending in my neighborhood before the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I, I have to be uh, extremely careful what I say. Nonetheless, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals carefully looks at, at every decision uh, that they need to make in the community, uh, weighing the best interests of the community versus the uh, provisions within our zoning ordinance, and uh, day, day in and day out, month in and month out, they do an exceptional job. Uh, I really think it, it is one of the most difficult boards in the community because of the sensitivity of the issues they deal with. Uh, this, the chairman this past year was Joseph Rustacci, and again, uh, did an a excellent job as uh, chairman of the zoning board. Uh, next is the uh, past chairman of the trustees of the Thomas Memorial Library, Dr. Joseph Schenkel. Uh, the library trustees uh, were extremely active uh, this past year in, in 1996, as well as in 1997. Uh, for the, the first time, uh, we have uh, the, the most organized different procedures and policies for the Thomas Memorial Library. Uh, it's, it's been a very, very active board. Uh, they've looked at a lot of issues of transition in the library, looking at the advancement of computerization. Uh, they were very instrumental in, in working uh, with the Zimprich family and setting up the uh, poetry and writing room uh, that's dedicated to the memory of Gabriel Zimprich. And the, the trustees have, have really been uh, providing a lot of positive leadership in the provision of all the library services. So, Dr. Schenkel, congratulations. And last but not least is the chairman of the Cape Elizabeth Conservation Commission, John Green. Uh, this, much, as, much like many of our other commissions, is a very hands-on commission. Uh, during John's tenure of the committee, uh, on the committee and as chairman of it, he could often be seen out on trails actually physically constructing them, constructing them uh, as well as advancing uh, many of the issues that the Conservation Commission had, ensuring that they have a much more active role in the planning board process as well as uh, advancing the interests of extending the green belt and obtaining grants uh, in order to expand that. And I'm pleased to pass this along to the Council Chairman to present to John Green. The next uh, presentation gives me great pleasure. Uh, the resolution is for Michael McGovern. I can say now from personal experience since last year that this town is incredibly fortunate to have Mr. McGovern as our town manager. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council resolution. Whereas Michael K. McGovern began his service to the town of Cape Elizabeth on May 22, 1978, Whereas Michael has served the townspeople with distinction, and whereas Michael has staffed numerous committees which have developed many studies and reports, some on projects which have contributed to the quality of life we have come to associate with Cape Elizabeth, and whereas Michael has been named the Link Stackpole Manager of the Year in 1993 by the Maine Town and City Management Association, and has contributed on a regional basis with governmental and administrative processes, and whereas Michael has worked diligently with department heads, school officials, state and federal sources to develop fiscally prudent policies for the town, whereas Michael has worked with 20 different town councils comprised of 33 different individuals with diverse viewpoints over his 20 years, and whereas Michael has had extensive service in international, national, state, regional, and local organizations, all of which benefit the town of Cape Elizabeth by expanding his knowledge of operations and allowing him to further develop his ability to function as an outstanding town manager. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does recognize and commend the numerous achievements and accomplishments of Michael K. McGovern in his service to the town of Cape Elizabeth, Maine, dated this year of his 20th anniversary 
at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, signed by all councillors. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you. say two quick things. It's not often that I'm caught by surprise. And two, I'm not going to sing. Thank you. Next is reports and correspondence. Are there any town councillors with any reports or correspondence? Councillor Barry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as uh, some of the folks know, I have been the uh, delegate from uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth Town Council to the County Budget uh, Advisory Committee for Cumberland County for the last year. We went through uh, many meetings and reviewing the county budget, and uh, it goes into millions of dollars. and. Uh, I, I am still on that uh, county committee, and I want to bring to the attention of the folks at home what has uh, come up. I think many of you have read this morning's paper, but I have been informed in the past uh, week by one of our county commissioners and by the county manager that a public hearing has been scheduled for this date, June 8, 1998, for what is described on their agenda uh, of the county commissioners as a space needs and possible expansion. And in inquiring uh, further, well, I, I first want to inform the public of my objection to the scheduling of an important hearing on a night when many of the affected communities in Cumberland County also have town council meetings and city council meetings. I know Portland does, and uh, many of the 25 towns and cities in this county have meetings on the same night, which I think is unfortunate because many of them would like to be heard at this commissioner's meeting. Uh, makes it impossible for many of the County Budget Advisory Committee members to attend that commissioner's meeting. Uh, secondly, I want the members of our community to know the specifics of the proposals before the County Commissioners, of which there are three. Uh, this has to do with space for principally the Registry of Deeds, which does need a little more space, and the District Attorney's Office, which has uh, about half of the courthouse. Uh, the first proposal that they have, are considering is an addition of 24,000 square feet for a sixth floor to the county parking garage on Newbury Street behind the courthouse. The estimated cost for testing the strength of the building to determine whether such a proposal is feasible is $15,000 just for the testing. Architectural and engineering fees are estimated between 3 and 12 percent, which seems to me uh, very uncertain of the entire project cost, and the construction itself is estimated at $1,800,000. Uh, I think that this is uh, an excessive amount of money to spend out of our county budget for these purposes, and the town of Cape Elizabeth spends uh, $550,000 a year, approximately, for the county budget. I would like to focus the attention of the members of our community on that figure, and all the rest of the communities are similarly uh, contributing to the county budget. The second proposal that they are considering is for a uh, 24,000 square foot uh, addition to the parking garage for parking and an, at an estimated cost of $946,000, almost a million dollars, and then a seventh floor of 24,000 feet square feet on top of that at a cost of $1,800,000. Supposedly that's for offices. Uh, then the final proposal that they're considering is for a four-story addition to the courthouse where the uh, jail was recently torn down, the one that was built in about 1964. The first floor above the street floor would add 11,000 square feet for parking and a second story would add another 11,000 square feet for parking. The estimated construction cost for that is $880,000. The next two floors with 11,000 square feet each would be made into offices at an estimated cost of $1,680,000. 
I think these huge amounts of money to be spent from the county budget deserve the scrutiny of the members of the Budget Advisory Committee, most of whom are in town council or city council meetings this evening as they're holding their hearing. The funds are proposed to come from budget surplus, according to the information that was given to me by the county people. Why, we wonder why there is such a huge surplus in the budget. The county commissioners represented to the budget committee last fall, as we went through more than a dozen meetings, that they needed all the funds that were appropriated just to run the county. Now they have these million dollars of surplus. I think that the taxpayers have been overtaxed in that regard. <clears throat> the town of Cape Elizabeth, as I've said, is taxed about a half million dollars a year. I think it's 550000 that's the approximate figure. And I believe that not only are the proposals uh, exorbitant, but the process is abusive to public information because of the points that I've made. So I just I suggest that all the uh, people at home who are interested contact the county commissioners who are Peter Feeney from our district, Esther Clement from Portland, and Gary Plummer from Wyndham. Uh, I uh, think that uh, you should voice your opinion if you are concerned about this uh, huge expenditure of public funds because you're going to find it in your own tax rate. We are looking at the uh, Levitt property and the uh, swimming pool uh, in our own community and I think we have enough to try to uh, wrestle with without the county expanding in this huge way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's uh, my report. Are there any other councillors with reports and correspondence? Councillor Reed. Mr. Chairman, may I just ask Councillor Barry a question? Certainly. You may. Thank you. Would you be putting that, uh, those comments in writing to the commissioners? I, I shall indeed, yes. I've already because I don't think they're watching this meeting since they're having their own. I'm sure they're not. Uh, and uh, I'd be happy to do that. I think that's an excellent idea. Thank you. Are there any other councillors? I, I do know, if I may just add to that, Councillor Reed, that, uh, that many of the uh, uh, people who are concerned but not on municipal boards are, I understand, planning to be there tonight. Uh, I would like to thank uh, everyone who made the Memorial Day parade uh, a success. It was a, a grand event this year, as always, and our appreciation, I'm sure, the entire council's appreciation for the hard work uh, it took to make that event work. Um, also, many of you have seen uh, what looks to me like a ski mountain at Lions Field. Uh, that is the construction going on, and uh, you might want to stop by and see that. And also, in the back part of Fort Williams, that construction is moving along. Uh, it's still not too late to contribute to the uh, fields, fields for Cape Kids. Um, there are still, they're still accepting donations. Um, also, Madam Clerk, we have an election tomorrow, do we not? We certainly do. Perhaps you would like to talk about the election. <laughs> Thank you. Tomorrow is the primary election. Um, polls are open at the high school gymnasium from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. There are also three bond issues. So if someone is a registered voter, however, unaffiliated with a party, they may come to the polls tomorrow and vote the three bond issues if they choose not to enroll in a political party to participate in the uh, political party's election. Thank you. Thank you. The minutes of previous meetings. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the minutes of the previous meeting be, uh, uh, be approved as read, as written. So second. Councilor Reed. With a question? With a question. Is that both the May 11th and the May 4th meeting? I right. will uh, so move, yes. That's fine. Fine. So there is a motion to approve the minutes of the May 4th and the May 11th meeting. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. We're moving along to item number one of the new year. The election of town council chairman for 
Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman. Councillor Baird. I make a motion that uh, Henry G. Byer of this council uh, be the, uh, uh, the town council chairman for the 1998-1999 uh, session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that uh, Mr. Byer be the chair for the uh, next year's session. Is there any discussion? Councillor Reed. I have a question. Um, I was wondering if the uh, maker of that motion would uh, include the rest of the uh, slate of offices at the same time. Perhaps what we could do, uh, we could do that, or we could simply elect Mr. Byer and then deal with the rest of the slate uh, in another motion. Thank when you. I would the chair. to do it that way. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> we have unanimously elected Mr. Byer to be our chair. And with that, I will return to my seat on the right side. And Michael will move. No, you were surprised, huh? But you have to take your coat. Yeah. I get my pen. Well, good evening, and uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the trust that you've uh, put in me, uh, uh, counselors, and I shall uh, work hard to be uh, worthy of it. Uh, please don't hesitate to give me input and suggestions. If you think that I'm off the mark, I would appreciate the input. And to those of you in the public, the same. If you have uh, suggestions or thoughts, I would uh, be quite willing to listen. With that, I want to uh, interrupt before we move on to something of uh, great importance, which is, I think, so I get that box okay. <laughs> should we go up to the podium? I think we should. Yeah. Joe. I have a commendation to give you uh, as the retiring chair of the uh, council. And uh, I'd like to make, I guess, uh, two remarks. First of all, thank you for being willing to serve. Uh, and I mean that very sincerely, and that's true for all the counselors. Uh, it's very important. Uh, secondly, I would like to pick out one thing that I think that you were preeminently successful at in your term. And to discuss briefly for the benefit of all of those that may or may not know this, uh, the Levitt property which the town has acquired uh, Joe was the principal mover in bringing that up, pressing it forward, and moving it along. And I would like to tell you or share with you some of the things that that is really important for and which it will bring to the town. Uh, I believe, and I may have the years wrong, but I believe the studies for uh, correcting uh, the location and the physical sites for fire and police have been studied for, is it Mike, up to nine years now? and have not been resolved. So uh, first and foremost, as I'm sure you all know, the opportunity to move public works over there and to expand uh, the police department space so that it's satisfactory uh, addresses an issue which has been hanging over our heads for nine years. Uh, secondly, uh, the issue which many of you are aware of which has been nibbling at us also for many years is the issue of uh, playing fields and lack thereof in, in terms of having a number and that will also be addressed there and the third point is that as the town has developed continually there is fewer and fewer less and less space uh, green space to be kept and it's our hope that that this property will allow us to have a great deal of that uh, i think it's a very far-sighted long-sighted uh, move on the town's part i think it was the right thing to do and joe i want to thank you and recognize you for that was just one example but i think that was an outstanding example of good leadership and uh, your plaque thank, thank you very, you very much, much. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be the chair of the town council. It was especially rewarding to work with Mr. McGovern. Uh, I am absolutely convinced that this town is on the right track. 
I am convinced we have a bright future, and it's in large part because the citizens of this town are willing to give their time and energy uh, in a collective manner to make this town better, and I'm just happy to be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I think we're now ready to proceed with uh, other appointments. Um, item number two, perhaps. Hey, what? Item, no item number two. Do we have to do the rules? Well, I was point uh, of order, Mr. It. Chairman. <laughs> Should we approve the rules first, the council rules? I'm sorry. If I put on my glasses, I can probably look. So we tried to do it. First. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, adoption of the town rules. John. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move adoption of the rules of the table, table is with the town council um, for the 1998-1999 council year. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we vote? All in favor? Any against? No, it passes. Thank you. Okay, now moving on to appointments, other appointments. Could we hear one motion for several? John. I would like to move that we take items three through ten collectively as one item. <laughs> and would you read them, or at least five? I'll second that. Yeah, I'm not sure if we need a motion on that to do that. Well, I, well, let's do the motion then. We'll assume that it's motion seconded by Rosemary. Any discussion? All in favor? Any against? Okay. Okay. Be more than happy. The, these are the uh, council appointments for 1998-1999. The Finance Committee, Joseph Groff, the Chairman, and the rest of the Town Council as members. The Ordinance Committee, John McGinty as Chairman, members Joseph Groff and Carol Fritz. The Appointments Committee, Rosemary Reed as Chairperson, uh, Ruth Watson and Henry Berry as members. Uh, MMA, Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee, Henry Beyer as a committee member. Uh, Greater Portland COG Council of Governments, Executive Committee, Carol Fritz, COG General Assembly, Henry Berry um, as, the, as the Assembly Member, with Ruth Watson as the alternate, RWS Board of Directors, Carol Fritz, with Henry Berry as the alternate, the PACS Policy Committee, Michael K. McGovern as Committee Member, the Thomas Jordan Grant Subcommittee, uh, John McGinty uh, appointed to the term till 6, 2001, with Henry Berry continuing his term to 1999, and Ruth Watson filling the unexpired term of Henry Berry until the year 2000. <coughs> Portland Headlight Committee, Bill Byers, Chairman, Joseph Groth as Vice Chairman, and that's it. So I make that as a motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Any against? They pass. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're now then on item number 11, uh, which calls for public comment in regard to an action upon renewal of malt and spiritus and Venus liquor license for the Good Table, Inc. at 527 Ocean House Road. Is there any public comment? Doing none? Uh, yes, Chairman, I noticed that the police chief is in the... Uh, room tonight, if we had any complaints about this, then uh, I would move that the uh, license be approved. It's uh, moved for approval. Is there a second? Second. Second by Carol. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any against? Passes unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Item 12, a public hearing and action on proposed amendment to the subdivision ordinance that would permit the planning board to waive the requirement that there be a sidewalk on every road in every subdivision, section 1632A5. We'll open a public hearing. Is there any uh, member of the public who would care to comment on this? The response is overwhelming. Uh, any members of the council who would care to comment on this? Are there any members of the council who would care to make a motion? Is it Mary? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that after having a public hearing that the uh, proposed amendment to the subdivision ordinance permitting the planning board to waive requirements that there be a sidewalk on every road in every subdivision in section 
16-3-2, paragraph A, subparagraph 5, be approved. Do a second. Uh, seconded by Joe. That's any, true. Excuse me? Yes. Yes. Uh, any further discussion? Yes, Joe. Um, I'd just like to comment that I hope that the Planning Board uses this, um, this waiver provision very judiciously because I hate to see them coming back to us or subdivisions coming back to us and asking for sidewalks to be, be put in and then, of course, the financial burden would fall on the town. And, um, you know, certainly not every subdivision needs sidewalks, so sidewalks on both sides of the street, but I'm sure that they will um, keep an open mind when they use this, uh, this waiver provision. I hope they will. Henry? He took the words right out of my mouth. I, I hope that... Uh uh, the uh, planning board will uh, not create a problem for the town that uh, would lead citizens moving into a new subdivision to come back to the town and ask them to put in sidewalks at town expense after the developer has gone to the bank. Other comments? Okay, it's uh, moved and uh, seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Any against? Passes unanimously. Item 13, action upon request to authorize purchase of a replacement fire truck. Uh, Mike, do you want to speak to that at all? A little history? Yes, very briefly. The fire chief and Captain Jordan of Engine 2 are also present this evening. Uh, back about two months ago, the, we went through a, another bid process uh, looking at the possible replacement of, of a fire truck, and that did not reach a success, successful conclusion, primarily because there was some concern within the bid process as to uh, not, not accepting the low bid and, and what tr truck uh, truly would meet the town's needs for the long term. I'm, I'm very pleased to report that, that this time I think we had a very successful bid process. The bids came in very competitively. Uh, we, we were not placed at, at a disadvantage because of the rebid, something that I had some concern about earlier, and I'm, I'm pleased that the, the bidders were very responsible and, and uh, very uh, responsive to the community. Uh, the low bidder uh, was E1, uh, was for an E1 fire truck from R&R &R Safety of Maine, uh, including a number of options. It's $223,616, uh, including uh, the, a visit to the factory and a few options uh, for the, by the time we get done with equipping the truck, it comes out to a total of $227,116. I would uh, encourage you to authorize me to sign the, the purchase agreement for the truck uh, with the understanding that uh, in approximately November of this year, this will be returning to the town council uh, for you to authorize me to sign a lease purchase agreement in that we will be spending uh, $73,000 uh, from the Fire Equipment Reserve Fund uh, for the truck and the balance of $153,000 $940 will need to be funded uh, over several years. So I uh, would ask that you authorize, at this point in time, the purchase of the vehicle with a total budget of 227116 So moved. Uh, it's moved by Councilor McGinney. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Councilor Fritz. Further discussion? Uh, yes. Rosemary. I just had a question. Are we naming a dollar amount in that, Councillor McGinty? Uh, he said 227-116, I believe. Thank you. Uh, other discussion? Uh, yes. what, uh, I'd like to ask uh, through the chair, the manager for the uh, interest uh, involved in the balance of the 153940 uh, we, we don't know exactly yet because we've not entertained proposals. Uh, for, for the lease, but for the we, yeah, we would expect it would be in the range of 6%, but uh, we're not totally sure at this point. In the past, we used to, each of the vendors would propose a certain uh, leasing agent to use, and in this instance, what we decided to do was to get our own proposals uh, for, for financing so that we, we could in, separately bid that in order to try to reduce the uh, uh, the, the price down over the long term. So it, this actually, it's, it's very unusual. We've never done it this way. We're actually doing it based on two bids rather than one. We hope we save money. Other discussion? Yes. I'd just like to compliment the, uh, the fire department committee, the truck committee that worked on this. Um, they did a great job on it. Um, and I know they 
having been around the fire station a couple of times when they had other trucks over there they were looking at and know that they put a lot of time and their effort into it. And uh, was Gilly the chair of that? Or you were? And to Captain Jordan. Um, and I might add congratulations to Captain Jordan and his wife for the addition of yet another Jordan to the Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand everybody's doing okay, including you. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for the thank you, and thank you to the fire department. Yeah. Other discussion? Hearing none, there's a motion. Uh, all those in favor? Any against? Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. <coughs> Item 14, action upon recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to permit individuals to donate park benches for a minimum donation of $600. Mike, would you mention just a little bit about the background and what the purpose is here, please, for the public? Yes, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission uh, has occasionally uh, received funds uh, for the donation of park benches. I think the, the, the most significant uh, was given by the League of Women Voters and by friends of Carol Fritz in, in memory of her late husband. Uh, they surround the pond and uh, they're very striking and a, a very fine addition to the park. The Fort Williams Advisory Commission uh, discussed wouldn't it be good if there could be more benches in the park for people to be able to sit down and wouldn't it also be a, a proper way to uh, uh, have people have an opportunity for recognition within the park? And they've estimated the cost of benches, including cost of installation, the bench itself, at a cost of $600 each. And this, this is, in essence, a new program that would be offered to citizens. And uh, that way, for that reason, they recommended uh, that it formally come to the town council uh, for your review and hopefully your favorable consideration. Their vote, by the way, was unanimous in recommending this to you. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilor Groff? Moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Reed. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, yes. In the, in the notes that we received in, the, in our packet, it said that the cost would be, uh, <coughs> excuse me, about uh, $400. And I understand that the $600 would <coughs> be a little extra money for the town. But uh, I was wondering about, uh, well, first, what are the bunch benches to be made of? Are they wooden? The, the desire is, is that they would be made of recycled materials. Uh, we, we, the, the benches that, that were donated in, in memory of Mr. Fritz at the pond uh, right. were made of recycled materials and have been very durable, have held up well. And, uh, that would be the point. That was what I was wondering about with maintenance, it, because it, it, it's like if you buy a cemetery lot, you get perpetual care. If, the, if a bench begins to deteriorate over a period of time, uh, is the town going to have to maintain them? And, and uh, it, probably that wouldn't cost very much, is that the hope? It, it would cost some. That's, I think I wasn't at the Fort Williams Advisory Commission when they discussed it. But you know, my sense is looking at $600, you are probably looking at about $100 for installation and $100 for a long-term uh, maintenance to set up a fund so that as, as individual benches need to be replaced. Uh, there will be uh, some money to draw upon. That's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I'm just curious about the details. That's all. Is the that recycled material is plastic lumber, so that uh, it would be quite durable. Thank you. Other discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll move the motion. All those in favor? Any against? No, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving to item 15, action upon recommendation of the Appointments Committee to fill a vacancy on the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Councilor Reed. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairman Byer. I would also indulge the uh, Town Council. We have a second uh, appointment. I hope it's been at uh, everyone's seat. It's uh, for the unexpired term on the Recycling Committee. Does everyone have that? as well okay so I would like to um, ask the town council to approve uh, the appointment of Alan Barthelman who is willing to serve an unexpired term ending uh, 1 1 or, or expiring 1 1 99 and also uh, Mr. Um, Chip Stockford who has been uh, working as a member of the recycling committee trying us out and has decided that uh, he would like to finish out the unexpired term uh, until January 1st of the year 2001. I second the motion. Will be seconded. Discussion? 
as a fellow member of the Appointments Committee. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Any against? That is unanimous. Thank you. Moving to item 16, action upon recommendation of town manager involving uh, balances to be carried forward. Mike, would you explain that? One? <coughs> yes, each June uh, we approach the town council for authorization to carry forward balances on expended in different accounts. Uh, many of these we don't know the exact amount yet, and we do know that however, that there will be June expenses. So as you look at the spreadsheet before you, many of them list an amount less June expenses. And in most cases, uh, those funds will be considerably depleted by the end of June. Many of these projects, for example, the transfer station repairs are, uh, for the most part, complete. The library shelving will be nearly complete by the end of June. Uh, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have on this. I, I would like to point out that the tree planting account actually should be increased by $2,500 from the amount that's shown here. This past uh, Thursday, was it Joe, Friday? Yes, I believe it was Thursday or Friday that uh, Oakhurst Dairy um, had a program where towns could apply for tree relief because of the ice storm. Our tree warden, Rick Churchill, did the application and I was pleased to go and uh, along with members of a few other towns and receive a check from Stan Bennett at Oakhurst Dairy for $2,500. Uh, it was a, a nice ceremony and uh, I know I, the rest of the town council joins me in thanking Oakhurst Dairy for providing uh, uh, these funds to us. On that further, the plan is going to be, it will be a program announced on the Cape Cora in the next couple of issues, is to use that 2500 for a matching program, similar to what was in place several years ago, that for citizens who wish to plant a tree that's in view of the public right-of-way, but outside the public right-of-way, that we would plant trees on a cost-sharing basis at 50-50. So Oakhurst donation would actually allow, will actually allow twice the number of trees to be planted. Uh, than, than $2,500 would simply allow. Actually, it's more than that when we conclude donated labor. Uh, this is quite a list. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has on any item on it. Yes, discussion? Councilor Berry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a general question. Do these amounts have to be carried forward by the end of June, by the end of the fiscal year? It's traditional in Cape Elizabeth that this comes to the town council. Mm -hmm. I was discussing with the auditors, auditors today, they were, they were in doing some pre-work, and they indicated that Cape Elizabeth is about the only community that does this. But nonetheless, I, I think it helps the town council to retain some fiscal controls. I was just wondering, if by the end of June all of the uh, expenditures are made, that are going to be made, then we would have precise figures rather than putting less June expenses. What do the auditors say about that? Is, is, is this? They're very happy with this process oh. as it stands. They're, they're, they're very pleased with it. It's one of the few councils that actually does it. Uh, before we have further discussion, do we have a motion? Oh. Councilor Groff? So moved. <laughs> uh, is it second? Uh, Council Reed. Okay, further discussion. Interest in any of the items? Hearing none, let us vote. All those in favor? Any against? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Item 17, uh, an appointment of a uh, person for a sealer of weights and measures. And Mike, would you explain, I know you had to explain to me what that is, what that is and who's uh, recommended, please. Yes, the sealer of weights and measures is a position that is established under state law. And the person is responsible for ensuring that every gallon of gas is in fact a gallon of gas, that every pound of uh, strawberries is in fact a pound of strawberries, and any other weights and measures, when folks buy lobster in Cape Elizabeth, if they buy it by the pound, it would be the lobster meat or lobsters themselves, that they're actually getting what they're paying for. I, I imagine this goes back to colonial times in, in terms of establishing this position. Uh, most communities do not have their own sealer of weights and measures, and a person from the state comes in and does it. In this particular instance with Cape Elizabeth, we have, as long as I can recall uh, for the 20 years I've been here, and I know quite a bit before that, we have always had the same individual as the city of South Portland uh, serve as our sealer of weights and measures. 
Uh, Keith Sherrod recently finished up, uh, retired from the position. Uh, Clarence Schwartz here in Cape Elizabeth uh, did it for many, many years. Uh, the individual who's being recommended, who's already been appointed by South Portland, is a gentleman by the name of William French. He does live in Brunswick. That is a, a bit of an inconvenience, uh, but the, the real advantage is he, he has all of the equipment. Uh, he can maintain the equipment. There's, there's quite a bit of all of the weights that need to be kept and the counterbalances and uh, all sorts of things like that. He, his income for this is that he gets to keep the fees that are generated. It's approximately $300 per year in Cape Elizabeth, whereas in South Portland there, there are single gas stations. I, when I would, met with Mr. Sherrod when he was retiring, he indicated that New Irving gas station or, or CN Brown, whatever it is, as you're approaching the mall, has 48 individual gas pumps that all have to be tested and measured. Uh, we don't have that volume in Cape Elizabeth. But anyway, uh, this gentleman, I, I quite frankly haven't met him. I've spoken to him on the phone. I spoke with South Portland. They're very happy with the services. We have some pending issues, and uh, I would recommend uh, that you can you appoint him as the sailor. Is there a motion? Council McGinney. I move that Town Council appoint William French as the sealer of weights and measures for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Seconded Second. by Councilor Berry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Any against? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Moving to item 18, proposed parking ban on a portion of Preble Street. Again, Mike, could you explain what that is, please? Yes, you received a copy of a memorandum the Chief of Police sent me a couple weeks ago, and then a, a further uh, memorandum uh, last week uh, recommending a parking ban on a portion of Preble Street. Uh, he is here to further explain it to answer any questions you may have. It, it is a, it's a tough uh, space if anyone's familiar with it. Would you like him to speak? If he would like to. Yes. I can get a cup of coffee. <laughs> Chief, please. Uh, thank you. This has been an issue down there for the last couple of years. They uh, redesigned the road there two years ago, made it a little bit wider, which encouraged uh, more traffic down there to park on both the easterly and westerly side of Preble Street. And my concerns to the manager were prompted by uh, two memos that I got from officers that had difficulty getting down through that street with a cruiser on various nights of the week. Uh, I went down there a couple of evenings, looked at it myself. I think the fire chief would also uh, echo my sentiments that it's a dangerous situation down there. We couldn't possibly get uh, a fire truck or a rescue vehicle down through there at certain times of the evening. Uh, realize this may inconvenience those people at the uh, apartment buildings, but I think the greater good is to consider public safety and ban one side, uh, the westerly side of Preble Street for, uh, from parking to allow passage of emergency vehicles. Questions? I have a question. Yes, Guinea? If we squeeze there, where's the parking going to go? You said it's going to be an inconvenience. Um, and I wonder, I'm not sure what the parking situation is in the surrounding neighborhoods. Are they going to be parking in front of people's houses who, you know, may not like their streets being mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what might happen? Uh, I, I really don't. It's something that the uh, landlords really should address. I, I, don't, I don't think there's uh, a problem with, with parking for the tenants of the buildings. I think it's guests that are staying there and things of that nature. Also, I think there's some spillover from the uh, garage that uses the street right. uh, as well. So uh, I haven't investigated what the alternative would be uh, and would, would hope that the uh, the landlords would take it upon themselves to, to find alternative parking. Okay. I, I just hate to see us create, move the problem somewhere else in the neighborhood. And so I mean, I, I'm willing to support this. I just interest what would happen. Other questions? Yes, Council Watson. Chief Pickering, I spoke with the uh, owner of uh, 589 Preble Street um, yesterday, and he feels that um, a parking ban would be expeditious, but at the same time, he feels it's a double-edged sword because as soon as the cars go away from both sides of the street, he feels that the speed will increase. There already is a problem with people coming down, um, heading towards Portland from Cape Elizabeth and making that corner to head over to the SMTC area and not reducing the speed. The speed on, on Shore Road is 30, and right as you make that corner, it's 25. But his concern is that he sees when there's not parking on both sides of the street and when only one can, uh, car can pass, because that's what happens when there are cars on both sides, only one car can pass, is that he's afraid that what he sees at other times is that people will continue to go 
35, 40 miles an hour by his house and by the apartment, and there are children living there. So if he, he, his request was that he feels there's a ban, a ban would be helpful. But at the same time, he is very concerned about the fact that that's just going to be um, fodder for the fire, if you will, in terms of people speeding. I also noticed today that the 25 mile an hour speed uh, sign is, is obstructed by limbs and by branches, and it's not all that easy to see as you make that, that turn. Sure. So we might want to look at that. And the other thing was that the apartment building, my, my understanding is there are about 12 apartments. And there's a concern that there may not be adequate parking being provided um, for the tenants in that building that might want to be looked at as, as well. So those are concerns that were mentioned to me by an individual who lives at 598 Preble Street. Sure. Well, as to uh, the issue of speeding, we have ways to remedy that. <laughs> and I can suggest some people you can speak to about it. <laughs> Uh, so we can certainly get down there and run some radar if, that, if that's the concern. I have a greater concern that there's more opportunities for children to dash out between two sets of parked vehicles yes. uh, than just one side of the road. So I, I, again, I think the greater good would be to uh, allow us free access down there. We can get down and also trim back by the uh, speed limit sign, do some selective enforcement, which should take care of that problem. I, and I do agree with you. I think there could be a problem as far as uh, the amount of space uh, that, that landlords are making available down there. but. I'm not sure where, what, what authority we have to, to see it this more. Other questions for the chief? Okay, thank you, chief. Thank you. Uh, the, the manager has suggested that we might want to consider either uh, passing this on to the ordinance committee or to a public hearing on the 13th, or we may have a different choice. What pleases the council? Yes, council. I, I have a question. Is there any reason we can't do both? As the chairman of the ordinance committee, I'm not. I'm not so sure that we need to look at this. I'm not so sure that we're going to get anything more out of it than what the council as a whole can have. You know, input. Um, you know, the chief's pretty clear on what needs to be done, um, and it's not all. It's not a huge, huge public policy issue at this point. I don't think. So I, I don't think the ordinance can, committee needs to see it. Council Reed. Because of that, I would be happy to make a motion that we uh, offer this for a public hearing at 7.30 in the town hall on uh, July 13th. So we second to that? I'll second that. I'll second. Seconded by Council McGinney. Any further discussion? Just would like to mention that we will be sending notices out uh, to all of the apartment dwellers there, the property owners, not only on Preble Street, but in partially in response to uh, Council McGinty's comments. Uh, to some of the abutters around there as well in case they may have some concern about spillover. The, the chief and I did discuss that same issue of what's going to happen with the cars. And he reminded me something I'd forgotten, and that's that they do, they are all able to find places during the winter uh, when we have a parking ban, so there, there must be uh, some opportunities there. So uh, we would hope uh, that folks would be able to be accommodated. It's not only during the daytime or the nighttime that there's congestion in that area it's very difficult to get through there sometimes um, during the day and and as the chief said kids can dart in and out um, between the parking cars and be very dangerous other discussion the motion is to put this out to public hearing on the 13th any other discussion uh, just one yes. point on the notice on the pool uh, they were going to set it at the same time but I guess this wouldn't be much of a public hearing so mm -hmm. Sometimes they say, or as yeah. soon thereafter as uh, people can be heard. <laughs> Nothing that fancy for me. I'll just say something. <laughs> it is tradition that we always set public hearings for the same time. Fine. Maybe not a good one, but it is tradition. <laughs> Other discussion? That's what tradition. Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor? Any against? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, how do we do a public hearing, Mike? Do I just read it? Uh, yep. Yeah. Item number 20. Uh, suggested pool public hearing. It oh, is missed proposed. item number 19. 19. What? Right. Item number 19. I missed 19, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, very important. Item number 19. Approval of plans for renovation of middle school second floor. 
Would anyone care to uh, present that and discuss it, please? Yeah, I just, I, we had almost forgotten about this policy, uh, but that's why we put it in your box, because assume that maybe a lot of the council either wasn't serving on the council then or had forgotten about it, uh, that we do have a policy that when any project of a value of $25,000 needs a building permit, prior to the issuance of the building permit, it come back to the council one last time. Uh, for you to approve the authorization of the building permit. Uh, you did review this with the school board during the, the budget deliber delibera deliberations. That coffee's getting to me. Uh, in, in terms of renovating the second floor of the middle school. I see out in the audience uh, former school board member Charles Greer here on this issue. Uh, Paulina uh, Portria, the school business manager, municipal controller, Sue Weatherby, the Director of Community Services and Ernest McVean, the town's facilities manager, all of whom are here this evening prepared to answer any questions that you may have on this. I mentioned all by name because they were nice enough all to come. Would anyone care first to move a motion? Councillor Groff? Oh. Yes, I'll move the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Councillor Berry, thank you. Moved and seconded. Questions, discussion? Councillor Groff? No, I would just uh, like to thank the individuals. Uh, uh, for the hard work, uh, I think it's a good plan. Um, I'm certainly for it. I think we all voted for it uh, in concept, and I look forward to this space being available for use. I think, what, yes, Councilor. I just, uh, for clarification, uh, this means we do not have to approve the renovation of the sub level for the community service because we did that in the budget. No, that will return to you as soon as the plans are ready. Okay. Other questions, comments? Hearing none, we'll move the motion. All those in favor? Any against? Passes unanimously. Thank you, and thank you all for coming to support that. Okay, now we're on to 20. Back to my reading. Shall I read this? Yeah, why not? Okay. In regard to uh, item 20, uh, pool public hearing, it is proposed to set a public hearing on Monday, July 13, 1998 at 7.30 p.m. at the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall on a proposal currently estimated at $2.2 million uh, to build a new pool entrance and filter room to provide new pools, uh, spectator seating to replace the uh, pool basin, to repair the uh, pool building and to renovate locker rooms as well as several other things which are listed here. Um, there is a proposal. How do we? Yes, Council McGinney. Uh, so moved that we set a public hearing on Monday, July 13th, 1998, at 7.30 p.m. at the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall. Moved. Is a second. Councilor Reed. Any further discussion? Yes. I just wanted to briefly mention, I spoke to Dick Spencer today, Richard Spencer, who is uh, with the firm of Drummond Woodson, who serves as the counsel for the Cape Elizabeth School Department. And there was an issue that had come up at the workshop and even prior to as to whether or not the pool project would likely require a pool referendum. Uh, Mr. Spencer did indicate in a conversation I had with him late this afternoon that it is likely that this project would uh, uh, cause to occur, uh, if the council so desired, a citizen referendum on the issue. If, if you wish it to move forward, it would require a referendum. The reason that being that under state school construction law, uh, any addition to a building that's more than 600 square feet uh, requires a, a public vote on it. Uh, based on the workshop discussion that the council had at one of your prior meetings, uh, that that should not cause any change in the timing uh, of any of the issues of the schedule that was mentioned. It, it is likely that the vote would occur in November when there's maximum citizen <coughs> participation and opportunity uh, to, to vote on this. Uh, so that, that was the opinion of the legal counsel. I will be getting it in writing. Uh, so uh, it appears that, you know, in addition to next <coughs> month's public hearing, uh, that as soon as the plans are developed this fall, you know, that there probably be an, an additional opportunity for public comment, and then the ultimate opportunity for public comment, a uh, vote of the citizens uh, the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Not requiring a, a vote now, though. Not requiring a vote now. Thank you. Council McGinney. I hate to be the devil's advocate here, but if we spend money on plans and planning and this thing doesn't pass, will we have spent that money in vain or wasted that money? Uh, probably not, because 
you know, even if the citizens turn down this proposal, there might be another proposal that they might be willing to accept. Uh, you know, the, the pool is clearly falling apart. Uh, you know, it, it has been given a, a lifespan, I think, at your workshop, you know, of about three years uh, possibly remaining. And uh, I understand the condition of the pool. I'm just, again, you know, I just, I say, I don't I hate to play devil's advocate here, but if it should fail at the polls, you know, yeah, we, the, spent, we spent the money. Yeah, the architects and engineers asked the same question when I told them about it this afternoon. Uh, m my sense is, as in every other project, that in order for the citizens to be able to vote on something, they need to know what they're voting on. And for that reason, you do have to move the plans along and have it designed and take the risk that however many tens of thousands that you may have put out there that, uh, you know, that that may be on a temporary basis or maybe perhaps on a more permanent basis uh, for not. But uh, you know, the, the fact that up to this point the project has had unanimous council support, I think unanimous school board support, a strong consensus within the committee, uh, you know, the, certainly the hope uh, an indication is that it, when the issues have been explained as to the need uh, that people uh, of, of good thinking uh, do approve it. And the legal opinion did not offer an alternative. It's just if we want this to move forward, this is the way we have to do it. It's a procedural issue, and that's what he indicated. And I didn't try to dissuade him from it. I, I think if you know, it's the legal opinion that that uh, that there ought to be this additional step in the process. Uh, that's, that's appropriate, and we need to be particularly careful uh, as, as we will be bonding funds for this project that when we look for the Bond Council's opinion, which would, which would be a later opinion, uh, that uh, everything is, is in order and uh, uh, ready for to move forward. Other discussion? Councilor Reed. I just wanted to um, remind Councilor McGinty that when we did the school vote, that if it weren't for those plans, that project probably never would have passed. So the other side of that sword could be that it's because of the study and the final plans that causes the public. And the forever optimist that I am, I would suggest that that would be the outcome instead of the first offer. Hope you're right. Are they just good? Council Watson. Uh, uh, Michael, in terms of the citizen survey, that has uh, the response that we've gotten, has it yes. been favorable so far towards the renovation of the pool? There have been 555 responses. That is, is a question that I've only looked at by turning select sheets. Right. Every indication to me that I have seen uh, is that there is strong support, but I, but I have not seen the tabulation of the first 400 something surveys. But every indication was from the, the what, what I think was representative sample is that it that it did enjoy uh, strong public support. Thank you. Other discussion, Councilor Fritz. Am, am I understanding that with the proposal as as the, as the motion is that we would be proposing for public hearing uh, choice D at 2.2 million? And I, I'm just hoping that we can have in the Cape Courier before the public hearing a pretty complete explanation of the various options that the study committee came up with and, and their various recommendations so that people can have a real full understanding of um, what the proposals are so that they can make their comments at the public hearing. The, the pool committee is working on that. Council mm -hmm. Groff? The pool report yeah. is also available at the library, is it not, Mr. McGovern? Yes, it is. And it's available here at Town Hall also if an individual wanted to look at it? It is, but we asked if people take them, that they bring them back because they're in short supply. But people are welcome to take them home for a couple of days. And I, uh, I echo uh, uh, comments of others. This is a very important expenditure for this town. It's a, a large expenditure, and uh, it will have an effect upon taxes. And it's important for the citizens of this community to be informed about this issue. And I hope uh, the public hearing is well attended. And if you can't come to the public hearing, I hope you watch it on TV. Other uh, discussion? Yes, if, if it would help to amend my, my motion for the public hearing, I would indicate that it's the proposal estimated to cost approximately $2.2 million, if that helps, Carol. Mm -hmm. if I could. Who seconded it? Is that okay with you? 
Other discussion? Yeah. Yes, Mike. Just for full disclosure, Councilman McGinty asked about how much he didn't specifically, but you know the issue of professional fees being spent. The amount of money in Option D that's for professional fees is one hundred sixty-nine thousand seven hundred fifty-six dollars. So you know, it'd be slightly less than that uh, would occur prior to November. It, it somewhat less. I don't know the exact amount, but it would be less than that. Thank you. Other discussion? Well, Mr. Chairman, That's this good. is the proposal of the committee, right? Yes, it is. And the other options that were considered by the committee might be uh, published in the Cape Courier or and elsewhere. But this is the one proposal that the committee feels is the most advantageous to the town. That is correct. Mm. Other discussion, Councilor Groff. But the report encompasses all the proposals. Right. And to understand Proposal D, it, to put it in context, it's also important to review all the work that oh, the sure. full committee did. And that's why anybody who's interested in this, I really urge you to read the report because it's really one of the better reports uh, that I've seen a committee here in, in town do, not to slight any other committee, but this committee did an outstanding job. I think they really did. I agree. Are there discussion? Okay, the motion is uh, only to set a public hearing on the 13th for public discussion of the uh, pool recommendation. Uh, it has been moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Any against? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, with my glasses back on, I hope I haven't missed any other items. We're now at citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Are there any citizens wishing to do so? There are not. I just oh, yes, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, the incoming council chairman and I met the other day, and he asked me uh, in the future, in the part of the discussion under reports and correspondence, if I would update the council uh, each month on a number of projects. And since he hadn't been elected yet, it was a little bit awkward to do that this evening. So I'll, I'll use this opportunity to do it in a couple of brief moments. The chair recognizes you to do Thank that. you. <laughs> he wasn't too presumptuous, but <laughs> the council had had a caucus earlier, so it was pretty clear what might happen this evening. Uh, it was earlier mentioned that the ball fields were under construction. Uh, former Chairman Groff mentioned that. I, I would like to point out that the Council has received a memo including where we stand uh, from the cost of that as well as progress. Uh, they're really progressing in, in very, very fine shape. Uh, they're, they've been flattened out. If anyone really wants to get a, a sense of what they're going to be like, uh, it's a really good time to go, to go over to either Lions Field or to Fort Williams and and see uh, they've really progressed while they're on budget. Uh, the, the financing, though, is, is, as Joe mentioned, is still very, very tight. Uh, there was an unexpected expense, as, as included in your memo. There was an issue of how the sprinkle is being paid for that, that really tightens up the budget. Uh, so that, that is of concern of how that, that underground watering system is being paid for. So any, any money that still comes in is, is very much appreciated. And just for your, everyone's information, I did talk to Steve Goldstein, who heads that fundraising drive up, and contributions are still coming in. And he was going to talk to the town manager. And so he's very encouraged that uh, it's people are looking at their construction and thinking, oh, I didn't contribute my share, and people are still writing checks. And uh, I hope that continues. I just gave six months' salary to the project. Yes, uh, Councillor Barry signed over his council contract with Africa today, <laughs> so <laughs> yes. the money is still coming in. Of course, the council paycheck is not a huge amount, <laughs> but nonetheless, it, it greatly appreciated. <laughs> uh, we've also been doing a sewer project over in Elmwood, Maplewood, uh, Cottage Farms Road. That, that has really gone well. I'd like to thank the citizens in that area for their understanding and cooperation. Again, it's, it's actually under budget at this point. Uh, I should mention that the ball for the project is being well done by Gorham Sand and Gravel Company, uh, the sewer project by L.P. Murray and Company, and uh, both firms have been very, very cooperative. We're also going to be opening bids this week on the Cliff Walk project or next week at Fort Williams. We had about six bidders go out and look at it last week. It, for the new councillor and for those of you that may not recall, uh, this came up last year, uh, Gus and Marjorie Barber, uh, the and Barber Foods have agreed to uh, donate over $50,000 in order to provide for the construction uh, of, of the cliff walk. And uh, walking it again last week is just striking. Uh, 
uh, how significant this will be to Fort Williams. Uh, Deborah has also been working with Moore and Saradin on ex the expansion of the cemetery, and bids are going to be open end of July. in the end of July uh, for a, a fairly major cemetery expansion. And uh, Deborah tells me that in the meantime, the lots are getting few and far between, so the timing of it is good, and if anyone can right. wait to buy cemetery lots, you really ought to wait until you see the expansive new area that we have and the, the much better selection that we now have. So we Just a quick question, Mike. How do you know whether you can wait? Uh, <laughs> we're going to cry our hardest. Uh, the Facilities 2000 Committee, which is the committee looking at the Levitt property, as well as the public works moving the building over there the, and the movement of the buildings here in the town center. The public safety area is going to be meeting tomorrow. Uh, they're interviewing four firms uh, to develop the master plan and to be the consultants for the project. We received 10 proposals. Uh, all, of, all of them were exceptional proposals, and I think uh, any one of the 10 firms would have served us well, but uh, the committee did narrow it down to four, and those interviews will be ongoing tomorrow afternoon. And, in tomorrow evening. Uh, Councillor Watson just referenced the surveys. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we received 550 surveys back. And considering the survey was, was simply thrown into the Cape Courier as an insert, didn't have a postage stamp, didn't have an envelope, uh, that really speaks well of citizen involvement in this community that 550 people would take the time to respond to a survey. The comments are fascinating. Uh, there's, there's a lot of them, you know, to the fact I bet you never read this, uh, <laughs> because some of them are food for thought, uh, but uh, the citizens have many, many opinions, and uh, Michael Feeney, our intern, has been working and uh, compiling those, collating them. I think the number that we got, it's taking a little longer than we anticipated, uh, but anyway, uh, I would hope that by this time next month, uh, we could present a full report to the council and consequently to the public on what their views were. Uh, all of the comments will be given to the council chairman. There are a few that are somewhat personal in nature <laughs> uh, that we probably won't publicize. But nonetheless, the, the council chairman will have those uh, if, if uh, they all are public records, if anyone really wants to see them. Uh, but a few of them are uh, interesting, They're very personal comments. Can people still send in surveys if they have not completed it at this time? They can, but if if it doesn't come in within a week, uh, you know we'll look we'll look at them and we'll, we'll read the comments, but they may not be included in the in the. Uh, you know, we we just can't keep adding to it. But you know it's been out there for two and a half weeks, and we actually got quite a few in the mail today. But my sense is with this with the new courier now out that they'll uh, just fall off. And just curious what the cutoff. Kind of but it, yeah, it was 550 before today's mail, so it's probably up around 575. With, with what came in today. But it, it's, it makes fascinating reading. And, uh, I appreciate all of the comments, even those that uh, <laughs> are uh, interesting. Uh, I'd like to echo what Councilor Groff said about Memorial Day. Uh, Jimmy Murray did a great job again. Uh, I had been away on vacation a couple weeks before Deborah really uh, pitched in a lot and made sure that everything was in good shape. Uh, Public Works uh, got not only those grounds, uh, where the memorial is uh, up and uh, looking good. Uh, also, uh, the cemeteries and all our other public grounds, and the Garden Club was also involved in helping to plant some of the flowers over at the, uh, the memorial. Uh, it, was, it was a good day. Was lots of involvement in the parade by lots of groups. Finally, uh, Family Fun Day is June 20th. Uh, we're going to be having fireworks, uh, as well as entertainment all day in the parade. And, uh, there was a, I received a flyer today. I think it was probably in the Courier on Saturday uh, on that, and just encourage everyone to participate in that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else to come before the council tonight? Hearing none, we I might. Move we adjourn. Move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Fritz. All those in favor? Any against? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. The council does this evening have to meet briefly as the Thomas Jordan trustees and as the Museum of Portland Headlight. My sense is that you probably ought to meet here on the dais because I know the school board is meeting out back. It should be rather quick business. No. I do notice that the on-air microphones are still on for anyone uh, who might not have noticed. <laughs> We're going to turn it off.
Thomas Jordan Trust. Maybe the, um, <laughs> the Thomas Jordan Trust. Is it not? Do we talk about individual? No, no, there is the host. Of course, that's what we're doing.